Hello everybody, I'm Porik E. Moore. I'm delighted to be the recipient of the Harold Zeman grant from the IKT and I'm collaborating with Marika van der Lippe on this short document which will provide you with some images and insights of this project. This is one of three ceramic sculptures called Fictional Sculptures by Sharon van Overmyren that are included in the exhibition. Conjuring the elemental energies of their primordial materials, fired earth and clay and water, van Overmyren's idiosyncratic forms speak of shrines, relics, totems, fallen civilizations, archaeological artifacts and fragments of culture, the kind of objects whose histories are pieced together by the colonial and taxonomic museologist's eyes. Copying and pasting these forms with references from the constant stream of imagery and information we encounter in the 21st century, as well as from the expansiveness of the natural world, Van Overmyren's sculptures seek to liberate objects from hierarchies and categorization. The focus of this installation are these wonderful candles, which as you can see are made from wax poured into plastic bottles. Lea Lucioni, a huddle of long slender candles teeters towards the gods. The imprint left by the plastics embrace show the malleability of their casts, pops and dents in the surface of the material. Scattered around these tapering shrines are a series of circular poofs, the kind you might spot at a wellness retreat. Their surface fabric is the kind of black velour favoured by teen witches and urban goths, and blazoned on their surface a ring of colourful shapes and geometric forms that could be a sequence of occult glyphs but are instead revealed to be the logos of various corporate giants. Behind me are three artworks by the Dutch artist Jan Kervezi. These are three of several works borrowed from the Stadshof collection. Approached almost scientifically, Kervezi conducted drug-induced artistic experiments almost daily throughout the 1970s. The meticulous level of detail in his painting show the hallmarks of this discipline and obsessiveness, driven onwards by the automatic nature of his process. Kervasi's psychedelic method required overriding the rational brain to let the hand formulate images subconsciously or perhaps psychically. Here we have a series of digital prints of drawings and watercolours by Suzanne Treister. Rendered in a cosmic palette of purples, blues and solar yellows, the powerful imagery of Suzanne Treister's Survivor F is sketched out in pencil and watercolour, giving us a taste of the outsider, the amateur enthusiast creating sketch after sketch in the attic. And yet they are so controlled, so formally and conceptually cohesive as to feel beamed in directly from another planet. Post-human hallucinations, satellite utopias, erotic psychic sex universe, Survivor, post-survival pagan robotics, blue moon apocalypse, post-neural network of disembodied desire. They have the aura of the handmade, the hand-drawn, and yet they are copies, reproducible upon location, printed to demand, like replicants. There are three pieces by Emma Talbot in this exhibition. I'm standing with these fantastic works, the title of which is Snakes Rising four snakes and microphone stands. And then behind me, two acrylic paints on silk, which are hanging from the ceiling. Subject of fear and fascination, snakes are of course a symbol of the pagan. They are almost always associated with the spiritual, but also seduction, luxury, and the devil, who takes serpent forms to tempt us. Ouroboros, the ancient symbol of the snake devouring itself, heralds the unending cyclical nature of the universe, proliferating in a regenerative loop. But these snakes are not circular. They are plucked from the ground and clipped to microphone stands, someone to rise and break their silence. Elsewhere, two silk banners hang from the ceiling in vertical shafts. They are painted with whirling patterns, almost psychedelic, but darker and ominous. I'm standing in front of this textile piece by Michaela Dwyer. The title of the work is Bay of Sick, and it was made in 2020. A smooth horizontal banner of intersecting circles spliced apart and opened out into a cascading geometric pattern. The hub of circular forms at the centre of Michaela Dwyer's Bay of Sick resemble the triform discs of the Biohazard logo, signage devised to weaponize abstract shapes into a universal symbol of peril. The harsh black and white colour scheme of the original warning sign is refracted, softened into muted greyscale and acid tones, 
a kaleidoscopic pattern expanding sideways, its broken down forms feel less ominous, freed from the perils of its original meaning into something altogether less rational. These two pieces are by Madge Gill. Uh, they date from 1920 and again are borrowed from the Stadshof collection. Madge Gill, an untrained artist who first began channeling her spirit guide in 1920. Though Gill exhibited in amateur exhibitions during her life, she refused to sell her artworks and vast swathes of work were discovered only after her death, stashed away in cupboards and under her bed. These 12 mandalas that I'm standing beside are by the artist Bertus Jonkers. They date, we think, from 1991. Each mandala presents a buzzing circular pattern with clusters of tiny painted dots or concentric arcs, dense disks of vibrating matter in a limited range of hues, blue, red, gold, mauve. Traces of printed text can be seen behind the paint. These mysterious creations are the work of Bertus Jonkers, an Utrecht-born artist and house painter influenced by Eastern philosophy, teachings which inspired him both spiritually and artistically, and from which he derived this mandala motif. This installation is by Awood van Rijn. It consists of a large display structure upon which are hung works that were produced over the last two years. A four-sided structure sits at the heart of the Great Invocation. A freestanding build of scaffolding and wood panels, each painted a different colour and hung with a set of works. Two and a half years worth of prints, drawings and paintings come together in the single installation. A suite of work encompassing four waves of output. Hovering over them all a mysterious figure, that of Kurt Seligman, a lesser known surrealist. These four drawings by Mark Lamy were produced in the late 90s. They are Indian ink and they uh, are also borrowed from the Stadshof collection, who began drawing them while incarcerated in a psychiatric hospital in the late 80s. Suffering from visual and auditory hallucinations for most of his adult life, Lamy began making these works at the age of 50, when he began drawing with an automatic hand. Lamy claims he tuned into supernatural voices which populated his head entering a state of hypnosis to produce these works. So the title of this exhibition, The Great Invocation, is taken from a mantra which was received by the British writer Alice Bailey in 1945. And she claimed that this mantra had the potential to save humankind from self-destruction. I found that very compelling, the idea that a artwork that was channeled or received from the spirit realm could then be transmitted further and circulated and that would have this healing potential on humankind. But I think on a broader level, um, what the exhibition is trying to do is construct an, a, a new kind of invocation, a system of hope, a, um, a new way of approaching the 21st century that is both optimistic while also realistic about where we currently are as a species. So I think that uh, there is a, a, a certain amount of spiritual optimism within this exhibition. And by bringing together artists of different generations and different backgrounds, I hope to also create a, a site of new discovery for the public who can visit the exhibition. And I think some of the events that will take place around this show will also expand upon some of these themes. Mm -hmm.